Hola friends, welcome to the Medicine, Marriage and Money YouTube channel, the only channel for physicians who want to achieve marital interdependence and financial freedom together. On this channel, you will learn how to show up as the best version of yourself so that you can love intentionally and build a more financially savvy relationship with your spouse. And I am your host, a physician mom, a doctor's wife, a Gottman leader, a certified life and marriage coach, Dr. Kate Mangona. Welcome, bienvenidos. So thank you. Hello, sweet friends, and welcome to another episode of Medicine, Marriage, and Money. Thank you for joining us on this day after Father's Day. So happy Father's Day if you celebrated Father's Day yesterday. If you are a father, if you have a father, if you're married to a father, or if you act in a father's role. So maybe you're a single parent, um, which you might not be listening to this episode. Maybe you know a single parent, or maybe you have a spouse, but you feel like a single parent. Either way, happy Father's Day and happy Juneteenth. So today is June 19th. I'm recording this and Juneteenth is now a national holiday thanks to our uh, president that declared it a national holiday in 2021. So I'm just going to go over today. The main topic will be how to raise anti-racist children. How to raise anti-racist children. And I'm going to be looking down at my source. I have a few sources that I'm going to share with you guys as we go over. Um, if you, any of you guys follow Dr. Becky from Good Inside, her community on parenting, love her. She had a uh, webinar the other day from with Brittany Hawthorne, one of the people who works for her on how to raise anti-racist children. And she wrote an article a year ago for Juneteenth, one year ago, about the 12 things you can do to raise anti-racist children and things you can do particularly around Juneteenth. And before I go into those 12 things, I'm going to briefly summarize them. Uh, and then I'm going to give you some references. I would like to talk about children in general and their ages. Now, some of you guys may have seen this graphic that goes from baby to toddler, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to six plus. So if you have the younger kids between baby and six plus, you may be wondering, how do I begin to have a conversation about race, about the color of our skin with my baby, with my one or my toddler, or even with my kindergartner? And so I just wanted to share this graphic. This is from childrenscommunityschool.org about what's appropriate and at what age they recognize different things. Okay. So they're not too young to talk about race. It just depends on how you present it and how you talk about it. So zero at birth. Babies look at all faces equally until about three months. About three months, babies look more at the faces that match the race of their caregivers. So if their caregiver is black, they're going to tend to look and notice the black faces more than the white or all the other colors in between, brown, yellow. And same goes if white babies going to tend to, if they have a well, if they have a white caregiver, it depends on their caregiver, not the color of their skin. So if they have a white caregiver, even if it's a black baby, they're going to be looking more at the white caregivers. Okay. Children as young as two years. Okay. So that, that covers like zero to one. Okay. So they're going to be looking at those faces and identifying with us more if they have their caregiver. Now, child, children as young as two years old use race as a reason about people's to reason about people's behaviors so they can relate somebody they know that has white skin to another human being like they might recognize oh she might have milk right if their mom is white they might look at another white person and say she has milk or she may be soft or he may be soft they may be warm they're going to 
protect me. So they're going to relate. Okay. By 30 months, most children use race to choose playmates. Okay. So they will identify with who they know, who they've been around and surrounded with, and they're going to use that to choose their playmates. Now, by four years old, expressions of racial prejudice often peak by four to five years old. Okay. So this is why it's important to talk about, talk about skin color, talk about the skin early because this stuff shows up early in our children. By five, black and Latinx children in research setting, settings showed no preference towards their own groups compared to whites. White children, however, remain to strongly biased in favor of whiteness. Okay. And this was a research study done by Durham et al. in 2008. And then by five years old or by kindergarten, children show many of the same racial attitudes that adults in our culture hold. They have already learned to associate some groups with higher status than others okay, by the color of their skin. And then six plus. So between five and seven years, explicit conversations with five and seven-year-olds about interracial friendships can dramatically improve their racial attitudes in as little as a single week. So if you have a five, six, or seven-year-old and you talk to your children about friend, being friends with other color skins, Latinx, Black, Asian, whatever color skins are, and, and, and introduce them, right? Like purposely put yourself in situations, be in those schools, have those play dates, go to those parks, go to those beaches that are diverse. This significantly increases who they're going to hang out with, who they're going to feel comfortable with. And just talking about it, right, can dramatically improve their racial attitude in as little as one week. That's from Bronson and Merriman in 2009. So that is, if you go and you want to find that resource, again, it's childrenscommunityschool.org. Silence about race reinforces racism. That's why we want to raise anti-racist children and not children who aren't racist, right? Because we are we all have bias. So we want to be an anti-racist and that takes active that takes active thought. That takes active behavior. Okay? Being blind to the color of somebody's skin is not helpful. Children are not blind to skin color. We may say that. We may think that when we are not ready to accept our own biases or accept other, other biases around us. So now I want to move on to the article that I read today. I... Brittany Hawthorne, um, and what to do for Juneteenth. And I think this really ties into how to raise anti-racist children because Juneteenth, June 19th is a super important day. Okay. So it starts, it started first of all, with learning what is Juneteenth? What does that mean? Okay. It's, it's the mark of the end of an atrocity committed by one race against another race. So in January 1st of 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was created or it was signed. Okay. In April 9th of 1865, over two years later, the Civil War ended. And in June 19th of 1865, Juneteenth, General Order Number Six, the Emancipation Proclamation word was brought to Texans uh, to at Galveston, Texas, and people were now privy to the fact that they were no longer had to be enslaved, even though this document was created two years earlier. Some, a lot of slaves were still enslaved, so the Emancipation Proclamation is a huge deal. Okay. So I'm going to get to tell you guys the 12 ways that you could celebrate Juneteenth, or actually you could do this 
at any time, right? Juneteenth just marks it. It's finally that day. Well, we've always had the day, but now that it's a national holiday, we can remember it. It, it, it just, it's the commemorative. It's, it's a, it's a purposeful day that we can do these things with our children, with our families, with our husbands, our wives, our partners, and celebrate Juneteenth which ties into raising anti-racist children. So number one, learn the history. I just gave you four dates. You can watch, you know, this is why Juneteenth is important for America. They've got, you can watch films on this. You can watch movies on this. You can read any books. There are over 18 books that celebrate, talk about celebrating Juneteenth or the Emancipation Proclamation. You can watch the documentary 13th by filmmaker Anna Duvernay, if I'm saying that name correctly, you can learn about the grandmother of Juneteenth. Okay, so learn the history. Two, you could attend Juneteenth events in your community. Now, because Father's Day was the day before Juneteenth in my community, we celebrated, or in, I, I'm, I'm sure your community as well, we celebrated Father's Day. I didn't even think to look for Juneteenth events. Next year, I will think about it, especially after doing this podcast. What I am going to do, though, is bring out the books like Henry's Freedom Box and other books I have on Martin Luther King Jr., my books like my board books and my my short stories for my three girls and start reading those the rest of the month. The third thing you can do is host a backyard barbecue and just say you're celebrating Juneteenth. Now, you don't have to do anything crazy or out of the ordinary. And I even read this other article before I'm before this one that I'm telling you these 12 points that said, if you don't celebrate Juneteenth, you don't have to. It's like you don't have to all of a sudden now celebrate Juneteenth. You can just honor and respect that the fact that other people do it. If you're a white American, you may have no reason to actually celebrate it, right? It might not have to be your day. We're so used to making, turning everything into our day, right? Like St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, it's a white holiday. It's Irish holiday. But we blow it up here, right? And then Cinco de Mayo, right? It's about the, the um, I believe it's the Mexicans' freedom from France. <laughs> it's not even actually the Mexican Independence Day. But we celebrate that like crazy here. Like even though half of most of us are not Mexican or Latin, in, even, in, in even other Latin cultures, it's it's not as celebrated as much as it's celebrated here in the United States of America. We make all these things about us. It's not about us. Okay, it's about the Black Americans, or particularly those from enslaved communities and families, being freed by the Emancipation Proclamation. You can honor that. Number four, you can support Black-owned businesses. You can take your children and go to a community store, a grocery store, a restaurant, uh, a gym, somewhere in your community that's black owned. And usually they're not shy about telling, if you can Google it, I when I go to ClassPass, I can tell if it's black owned company. Sometimes when I shop online, I'll it will, there will be a little flag or it'll let me know because people advertise this, okay? So when you do this, make your children aware, let them, let them know this is why we're doing this. Okay. Five, teach your children the truth. So reading children's books like Juneteenth for Maisie by Floyd Cooper, Opal Lee and what it means to be free. The true story of the grandmother of Juneteenth by Alice Faye Duncan. Juneteenth, a picture book for kids celebrating black joy. Okay, so read children's books that celebrate Black history or even talk about Juneteenth. You can watch movies with your children, 155th anniversary of Juneteenth. If you start the journey towards anti-racism young and together with your children, you will raise anti-racist children. If they're not young or you don't think they're young or you think you're too late, you're not. You can start now. Six. Plan a Juneteenth meal with your family. Invite your cousins or just have it with your children and have a meal. Hey, talk about maybe you check out 
from the library or you buy on Amazon some Southern cookbooks, some Southern cookbooks by Black chefs. What Mrs. Fisher, here's one of them, what Mrs. Fisher knows about old Southern cooking, the first African-American cookbook from 1881 by Abby Fisher. Black Girl Baking, Wholesome Recipes Inspired by Soulful Upbringing by Gerald Guy. Seven, donate to Black-owned nonprofit organizations. Some of the organizations this article by Brittany Hawthorne recommends Nia Culture Center, located in Galveston, just a few hours away from my house. I would say, well, maybe not a few hours, maybe more like eight hours. Project Row Houses, located in Houston, Texas. Buffalo Soldiers Museum, located in Houston, Texas. Black Outside, located in San Antonio, Texas. Next, might go to San Antonio or Houston. My kids are going there. We're going to be talking about it. My first daughter was born in San Antonio. My husband and I trained in Houston. Eighth, understand and support reparations. So Juneteenth is a celebration, not a reconciliation. Black people are still owed acknowledgement, compensation, restitution, and rehabilitation for hundreds of years of enslavement. Just the, not, I don't want to say the same, but maybe in a similar way as how we help out our military, right? They have their own hospital, the VA system, which a lot of my friends work in that system, right? They have their own discounts everywhere you go, the movie theaters, restaurants, museums. Everybody has a military discount. If you don't, you should have one, right? Like it's not a reconciliation, okay? Nothing was reconciled. There's hundreds and hundreds of years of damage that still need to be repaired, observed, honored, celebrated. I mean, the actual Emancipation Proclamation celebrated, the the free, the freedom okay, of enslavement celebrated. Nine, read black stories all month long. Okay, we talked about this. We talked about you reading them for yourselves, you reading them for your children to raise, like they're gonna watch you read them. I have a book on my shelf right up there called Anti-Racist Business Book. This is the perfect day to get that book down and actually read it. I've been meaning to read it for a year. I'm going to get that down and I'm going to, I bet you my oldest daughters want to, want to know what I'm reading when I get that down. To pause here for a second, real quick. Um, 10, commit to anti-racism. Okay, so commit to it, right? This represents the ending of a civil war, a new era, the end of white supremacy. 11, watch out, watch their favorite TV episode about Juneteenth. The Johnsons celebrate Juneteenth. 12, ask your children. Okay, I have to go. So much love to you and your spouse. Okay, so I have to make a quick correction to something I said earlier um, in my podcast. The Emancipation Proclamation did not free slaves. The Black people freed themselves. The slaves freed themselves. So... Although the Emancipation Proclamation did not end slavery for everyone in the U.S., it did grant freedom to enslaved folks into rebellious states, okay? So what they did is they created ways to escape, like the Underground Railroad. They planned revolts and rebellions that were organized against captors. Self-education was a powerful tool also for empowerment. Acts of sabotage and work slowed down. Slowdowns disrupted the plantation economy. And legal battles and activism contributed to abolitionist abolitionist movement. And this, again, I got from Britt Hawthorne. You can follow on Instagram, Britt, at Britt Hawthorne. Okay, I got to get back to my crying children. (laughs) I'm trying to record this as they're falling asleep. So much love to you and your spouse. Please take this day, week, month to continue to celebrate Juneteenth and recognize the Emancipation Proclamation, the um, the escape during the under uh, through the Underground Railroad, everything, the recognition, the reparations, everything that we owe to the 
Black Americans that we live and work with and and all the things you can do to teach your children to be anti-racist. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Follow Britt Hawthorne on social media. Thank you. I love you. So much love to you and your spouse. And share this to somebody who may really need to hear it. If you are finding the concepts I teach in these episodes useful and want more in-depth and personalized support for your relationship, consider this your invitation to join me in creating the most connected and intimate relationship with your spouse that you could dream of. Go to www.medicinemarriageandmoney.com right now and download my 18-page Medical Marriage Survival Guide and Workbook at no cost to you. I also have a six-day marriage challenge, which goes over the six predictors of divorce at no cost to you. These have been known to decrease fighting, rumination, and grudges between you and your loved one. If you want to take it a step farther, really enhance the joy and connection in the most intimate relationship in your life, sign up for my eight-week Making Marriage Work program today at medicinemarriageandmoney.com. Thanks for leaving us a stellar review, subscribing, and sharing with your friends on social media. You have the power to improve someone else's life and marriage simply by sharing this episode. Much love to you and your spouse. You're exactly where you need to be in this moment. Adios, my friends. The content of this episode is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical or financial advice. The opinions provided on this episode are for are those of myself or the invited guest alone. They do not represent the opinions of any particular institution. Always seek the advice of your physician or financial advisor with any questions you may have of a medical condition or financial plan. This is for your entertainment only.